Leah sighed at the sound of father shouting her name. Reluctantly, she abandoned her chores and hurried to the front of the tent to meet him. Father walked into his camp of encircled tents, a wide grin on his face, and his right hand clasped around the lower back of a young man much taller than him. Leah wiped her soiled hands and brushed aside the stray strands on her forehead as the men approached. Leah, my goodness, don't just stand there. Fetch some water for our guest to wash his feet. Arrange for some food then. He must have observed her confusion. This is Jacob, my nephew, your cousin. He has journeyed all the way from Canaan. Leah grew up hearing about their relatives in Canaan, the Hebrews. Descendants of the great man Abraham were a very wealthy clan. Jacob stood tall and limp, staring down at Laban's stout, robust stature. Why would a man of such prestigious heritage travel alone? He looked famished, but handsome nonetheless. His perfectly sculpted face was smooth, with not enough hair to mark the age his eyes told of. His skin looked like it was sun-kissed for the first time. Their eyes met, and he smiled at her. Heat flushed through her like warm water from her cheeks, down her body, and then to her feet. Welcome to Haran. She muttered, rendering an awkward bow before running behind the tent. The kitchen buzzed with the news of the Hebrews' arrival as the female servants prepared for a feast. Leah took a deep breath, spewed out instructions, and got busy herself. Jacob, her own kinfolk. Could it be the gods have answered? All these years of bearing the silent blame. Surely, if she were out of the way, her younger sister, Rachel, would be married in a heartbeat. The men of their tribe knew the custom. The older sister must be married before the younger. Yet, how many men had come seeking Rachel's hand only to be turned away by father because of her? Father would speak with all his persuasive power. Leah, my daughter is truly lovely. She reminds me of her mother and why I married her. She will make a splendid wife. He would recount the regret of losing his dear wife and how his older daughter filled the gap her mother left in the home. But they came for Rachel and it seemed they all sat around, waiting for the unfortunate man that would endure her. Jacob would undoubtedly be no different. Leah shook her head, pushing the hurt aside. She cautioned herself not to think of Jacob. An idle mind was ground for foolish thinking. So she scrambled from one item to the next, determined to focus. What was one to serve a Hebrew? Finally settling on freshly baked bread with curds, she sent a maid with a meal and found something else to do. But growing like a wild cherry plant beneath her resolve was the curious fantasy of what it would mean to be married to a Hebrew. Later that evening, there was feasting and dancing with men and women from neighboring camps present. Young women danced round a fire blazing at the center of Laban's camp, and Rachel stood out like a goddess with a bouncy hair and sultry moves as the men clapped and cheered in admiration. <laughs> Rachel made her way to the corner where Leah stood. She swayed her hips, hands lifted with clapping as she approached. Silly child, there was work to be done and she was dancing. Before Leah could protest, Rachel grabbed her with both hands, pulling her to join the dance. Oh Leah, don't be such a bore. There's finally some excitement around here and you stand there pouting? Let go of me, Rachel. We have guests. There is much to be done. Ha, indeed, dear sister. Rachel let go of her hands. You must permit me to go play my part. She danced her way back to the fire as the men cheered in applause. Leah scowled. Her sister's love for attention irritated her. The truth was, she couldn't dare dance in front of all those people and risk embarrassing herself. How did it feel to be so admired? Father shouted something, and his sons laughed at the top of their voices. They were sitting with Jacob in the visiting porch of Laban's tent, but Jacob appeared distant and uninterested in the jesting. Lifting his head, he caught her eyes and nodded. Leah grinned. 
sheepishly. Jacob. She should have paid better attention to her appearance. 